Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to bring you a funny card today. I'm calling it a unicorn surprise party. It's a birthday card using some stamps from Gerda Steiner. And it's got a couple little standing and then one walking unicorn. And I thought the three standing ones kind of went together for a scene, but what would the walking one be doing? And then there was the surprise sentiment. So what I did was stamp a bunch of the images and just put sticky notes down in a couple places and then look to see what kind of a scene I could create out of this. Because I was thinking all of these little guys could be hiding, ready to jump out and surprise the walking unicorn. So they're all hiding in this section back here and I'm gonna throw a sofa in here. I've started off just using a light marker. So you could do it with a pencil, but marker is something that'll blend back in once you do all your coloring. So I'm making a window on one side and I thought a night scene would be kind of fun. So I'm just kind of sketching in where a moon might be in the window. Maybe there's a picture hanging on the wall back here just to give myself a general outline of what I'm going to do so I have sort of an idea. And then the moonlight when it pours in is going to come kind of down at an angle like where I've sketched it in. So I'm going to have some really strong light and all of these little unicorns are going to be hiding in the background in this grayed out area. And then I thought, well, what if I did the whole thing in grays? So yeah, it's a unicorn card with grays. <laughs> They're all the T markers. They're the toners. Um, so you'll be able to see the difference between them. They are just like the other markers. You know, the number as it gets bigger, the color gets darker. And then the toners and the neutrals are not ones that I necessarily recommend that you need, but I had the most of these inked up. So if I was going to use a whole set of something and try to do them all together, I thought, then I'll use these. And I started by just knocking back the color on everything that's in shadow, just to give myself a baseline to work from, because I'm going to have really strong contrast here. For some people, they'll be freaking out already. Please sit down if you have not already, if it's upsetting to you. Um, trying to figure out you know, where that moonlight's gonna fall, what's gonna be in highlight, what's gonna be in shadow, and just get it sort of penciled in, except it's markered in. So I have a, just some basic shapes. And for me, when I do a lot of scenes and contrast and stuff, it's all about what the shapes are. And I'm trying to look for what that shape is that that window is gonna cast as it goes across the scene. So now I'm going to start throwing in some colors to start establishing the scene. I'm going to start with some darks to figure out where the very darkest will be because that's going to define a lot of these shapes. And then I'm going to blend from this really dark, um, I think it's a number nine there, go to a seven, then to a five, just kind of keep skipping down until I get lighter. When you're talking about deep shadows, the ones that are right under that sofa and right against that wall will be the deepest and then the light disperses a little bit in the room so down at the very bottom of the card it's going to be a little bit lighter just because the light from the window will disperse a little bit across there and i'm kind of scribbling a little bit and i'm going to fix that later but i wanted to sort of at least see how dark it needs to be before i fix it because going back and over and over and over and over and over again gets a little irritating after a while so i'm just going to try to get a, a good bit of color down here so then I can determine later exactly how much I'm going to need. So now I'm going to start putting in some of the other items in here. Some pillows on this sofa. There's going to be a kind of couple stacks of pillows with that one gift box on it and just creating basically some shapes and I'm looking for with this darker pen I'm trying to delineate those shapes a little bit better and then I'll go back in with the lighter marker and just add the rest of the sofa and some more pillows up on top, figure out exactly how high they're gonna go as they get up toward my hiding unicorns. <laughs> I hope this is not disappointing that I'm doing a unicorn card with, not, with no color on it because unicorn cards are usually bright and rainbow colored and this one will not be because little, the little unicorn that's walking in, I'm picturing him just coming home from a long, hard day of unicorn work, um, whatever it is, sprinkling pixie dust or whatever the, the unicorns do all day. He's coming home from a long, hard day at work. It's his birthday. He's not very happy about it being his birthday, but he's trying to be happy. You can see he's got a little bit of a 
smile on his face, the way his little eyes drawn. He's just coming home. It's late at night. He's been he's had a long hard day, and his friends are all there and are going to make his day in just a few moments. And we get to watch just at this moment, and he as he's coming into his dark house. Now, if you actually walk around your house in the dark, you'll notice that there are very few colors. You may see a little bit of color as light kind of trickles down onto something. So the the carpet that he's standing on and and the the owner, the birthday boy, birthday unicorn, uh, those po probably would have a little bit of color in them, but I'm not gonna add that in this. I'm just gonna let it all be black and white on the card. And, but the rest of it, if you notice when you're walking around at night, is you don't see much color. You may see very little, but you really don't see much. So black and white is a really good way to indicate that. Now this little guy back here needs to keep getting darker. And what I'm doing is taking, I think this is a number three marker, and I'm just going to keep getting darker and darker until I figure out exactly how far I want to go with any of these. And for some folks, this is already too far. <laughs> But I'm trying to set that contrast. That's why I started with the part underneath of the sofa because I wanted to make sure that that was good and dark and set the tone for everything else because it's going to give me a good idea how, how much I can do, how far I can go with the other grays and what's going to make them look like they're, they all sink into that background because they're all hiding and we want them not to be seen really well. So I'm adding a little bit of reflected light onto some of them, like the second and third one, the, the one on the far left and the one in the middle, may have a little bit of light that might be bouncing around the room and landing on them. The little guy right behind the curtain may not have so much because he's got that curtain maybe shielding him. So then I decided I was gonna do something on the wall to make it look like maybe there's wallpaper. Just a little more interesting because long, or large areas that are just blank can often feel really boring. And on a floor you can get away with really boring. On a wall you somewhat can, but if you can take away one of those and make one more interesting by breaking up the shapes or adding some texture or something, then it often will help. So I decided I would add just a little bit of texture to it. And then the picture um, doing kind of a black and white rainbow. <laughs> picture on their wall because you know they would have a picture of a unicorn a rainbow if they were unicorns that's just what they would have pictures of wouldn't it be I would think so now add a little bit of color onto the curtain that's hanging down add a little bit of texture and lines and stuff in that and then I'm gonna start working on the window sorry this is all cut off a little bit here in the top corner but I'm going to fill in my sky with the dark gray. And I'm leaving a little bit of white on that curtain. The curtain edge is probably going to be one of the brightest things. It's closest to the light. It's closest to that window, that moon coming in. And again, there's probably easier things you could do. You could like actually add the, the crossbars of the window with a white pen and make it easier, but if you can do it with Copic marker, it tends to just fit better, not look like it's been an add-on. And now the final thing is the little birthday unicorn, little birthday boy, or girl, or whatever it is. <laughs> and I'm adding some shadows to indicate that the light is casting onto the tops of the ears, onto the back, onto the tail. And there's going to be just a little bit of white on the tip of the nose. And I'm going to try to add a little bit of shading there to give them some dimension while also still having some highlight up there on the, the top side up there. Increase the shadow color underneath them. Again, it's cut off just slightly. And then the window, the, the line crossbars on the window would also be there. And here I'm going to go over one more time on my floor just to even it out a little bit better, tidy it up somewhat. And there is my finished card. <laughs> my black and white unicorn card. Who'd have thunk that Sandy would do a black and white unicorn card? But unicorns have surprise parties too, and I'm sure they've had them at night before, so that's what it's going to be. On the inside of the card, I've added a little unicorn holding a cupcake so that 
the surprise sentiment is on the inside rather than on the outside. And that is the end of my card. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. You can subscribe by clicking on my face. You can watch some other videos here. Or there's also some classes that you're wel welcome to take over at my new classes site. And there's a link there on the screen as well as in the doobly-doo down below. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.